we like to take step ahead and move on and talk about the entire components in the energy system and the energy ecosystem and i would like to invite our uh, esteemed panelists we are truly privileged to have them here and we want to thank them for uh, having spare some time from your busy schedule busy schedule to enlighten all of us may i invite uh, uh, mr danish sharma who is vice president in investment banking at yes securities mr vinay rasogi who is managing director from rich to india uh, mr akash patel uh, who is from the procurement team of adani uh, mr mayank mishra from huawei and uh, mr manish narula who is senior director business development at jinko solar so the way we'll go is that uh, we'll have a uh, interesting uh, presentation by mr uh, mayank mishra from huawei so how exciting it is so we have the world's number one uh, solar panel company and now we have the world's number one water company who will be making a presentation and uh, then we'll have a small uh, speech by mr akash patel from adani and then we'll have a panel discussion with our esteemed uh, five panelists who will be which will be moderated and uh, uh, steered by mr danish sharma from es securities so ladies and gentlemen big round of applause uh, for uh, our esteemed panelists on the dais and uh, uh, over to uh, mr mayan from uh, huawei to start with this presentation thank you anand uh, good afternoon everyone so we have uh, so many presentations this morning and all the presentations were very very informative from jinko team we must i must appreciate that so i would like to first uh, give my uh, thanks to jinko team for uh, inviting huawei to give a small presentation here i would like to keep my presentation very brief and i will just touch upon three key fact uh, uh, points in my presentation the first one would be what is what huawei is doing uh what we have achieved in solar industry and second will be some challenges uh, in the solar uh, field and last will be what new innovation we are doing in the inverter technology inverter solutions so i'm going to quickly start with this uh, i'll first introduce Co huawei corporate so huawei is a very uh, known company in the telecommunication field we are in present we are present in more than 170 countries uh, we are listed uh, Uh, so we are uh, Fortune 500, uh, 500 companies right now. Trend is 83, more than 180,000 employees, 80,000 R&D employees, 36 joint innovation centers, 15 R&D centers. So from 2012, we were around uh, 35 billion dollar company. From there to today, 2016, we reached 75 billion dollar revenue. And this year, we are ex uh, expecting to hit uh, 82. The results are not yet out. The half year results were around 41 billion. so the reason for uh, you know we huawei's growth is investing back in the r&d so we always stay on the edge of the technology you innovate product uh, ahead of the your competitors so you are going to get the more market share more market share more revenues that's the key so we have invested around uh, 10.9 billion in 2016 back into r&d we have uh, r&d centers in sweden uk germany russia So, glo globalized platform is one of the key uh, success factor for Huawei. We have so many uh, globalized platform where we use those platform for several different technologies. Uh, we are present; uh, these are present in more than 170 countries. And uh, the this is 20,000, uh, 22,000 staff is for the uh, globalized platform. Now, talk about the India. So, Huawei uh, started uh, business in India 17 years before. we have more than 8000 workforce in india and 11 cycle offices six spare parts center we have present in all the major countries you can see on the map chandigarh jaipur delhi uh, we have our head offices in gurgaon uh, hyderabad bangalore r&d center and local manufacturing in chennai nearly 30 years of experience in power electronics business uh, mainly from the telecom sector data center uh, data center energy and uh, the latest one is the smart pv solution now i'll talk about specifically for the solar business so in solar business what we have achieved we have uh, 
we had central nesting inverter both till 2012 and we at that time we did a comparison and decided that from here onwards we are going to focus on only on string inverter. So we will keep on improving, we see that this is the future of the market. So uh, we shifted our focus and from there to today we have become number one uh, inverter uh, shipment company in 2015 and we maintained the situation in 2016 and same is going to uh, trend in 2017 as well. So in 2016 we ship 20 gigawatt string inverter and 2017 it's 30 gigawatt. So we are number one in UK, number one in Germany, number two in France, number one in China, number two in Japan. Uh, now I'll talk about India. So in India we did uh, enter a little late. We entered around, uh, in 2016. Uh, we did the uh, first project with Wari Energies and then uh, we did in this one year of span we did two gigawatt of shipment to India. So majorly to Adani, uh, Tata Power, Sterling Wilson, Jackson, Mahindra, Hero Future Energy, Mitra, Energy and Energy Power. So these are our customers. This is one of the project, 15 minute project in Mahoba UP with all the existing inverters. This is 20 megawatt uh, Mansur project with this NTBC project. And very interesting, uh, now the, this uh, talk, there's a lot of talk about the floating projects are coming. There's a tender of uh, six to around 6 gigawatt or, uh, from Seki. So for this, Huawei has already done around 200 megawatt of project. Uh, globally uh, on floating solars, which is this, you can see the, uh, the largest one is 20 megawatt in Hangzhou, China, 22 or 50 kilowatt in Thailand, 2 megawatt in Japan. So there are a lot many projects in China and Japan. So we can discuss about it. Uh, what are the key values Huawei has for this of the stage? This is uh, the largest uh, solar power plant in China, one gigawatt at Yangtze, all with Huawei string inverters. 300 megawatt on the rooftop line in China in multiple several rooftops. Now I'll talk about the challenges in the uh, solar, uh, solar for solar power plant. What uh, solutions you know the customer and the developers uh, the challenges that the developer face. One of the challenges the uh, the traditional string inverter might have uh, somewhere around 17 MPPD per megawatt. That's not enough to uh, extract the for full yield out of these strings. So Huawei Nutters comes with uh, 120 MPPD per megawatt. So we are able to optimize more yield per megawatt. And we are able to extend more yield from these panels. Another challenge is the, uh, the inverter has fans during the uh, one year after two years because of the dirt, the fan gets some problems, get choked, need replacements. However, Huawei solution comes with without any fence, so there is a low maintenance, low fault. And one of the major uh, problem we have seen in the rooftop plant as well as the, in the ground mount, that it's more secure for the rooftop because uh, if there's a fire happens, then the building is going to get hurt, the structures, there will be problem for the building. So uh, what we have come with, we have come with a solution where we can detect the any arc on the DC side and it can disconnect the whole system. Now I'll quickly introduce the system. So what you see on the uh, screen is a panel. After that, there will be a smart PV inverter which can communicate with either 4G, RS485, and PLCC function. Uh, then our AC combiner box, LT panel. This is how the system looks like. Uh, now I'll talk about the roadmap. So currently we are we have uh, been selling 43 kilowatt and 55 kilowatt uh, pro uh, products. Now what we are coming up with the 70 kilowatt uh, inverter for 1100 volt and 95 uh, kilowatt inverter single inverter for 1500 volts and 50 kilowatt another uh, for the rooftop market. So these are some new products which we are launching in 2018 and a smart logger with 4G enabled. Now I'll quickly touch upon what new innovation we are doing. So first one is sting level management. Uh, we are doing the there is no DC combiner boxes and no uh, fuses. Multi-level uh, topology, we are increasing the topology to uh, level 5. Natural cooling, IP65 production. No inverter room required for string inverters. Zero touch maintenance. Uh, power transmission, uh, we are using the NTPID, so it helps you to recover the NTPID during the night. And PLCC function, so no need of any wire to 
from inverter to your SCADA. Finally, the monitoring system. So NTPID, so there what we are doing in the NTPID, we are giving uh, one NTPID kit uh, which is fitted inside the inverter as well as uh, in the smart logger. So there, there is a one prevent function as well as the recover function. So recover function is inside the inverter and the prevent function is uh, in the smart logger. So both are going to help you to uh, developers to get more yield out of the panel. Integration with trackers. So, you know, when we talk about the innovation, the next innovation comes to how do we reduce <coughs> the uh, more number of parts in a solar power plant. So, one is control this tracker with the string inverter itself. So, we have done some projects uh, in China and one we are already in India as well. So, if anybody would like, we can talk more about this. This is uh, 50 megawatt in UP. We have done tracker with uh, Huawei learners. So, it will not only provide the power, also provide the control signal. A smart IV curve diagnosis. What we are doing here is we, uh, you know, the, the smarts, we are already monitoring the current and voltage. So we are using this data to plot IV curve, which will keep on uh, doing it uh, every day. You can uh, scan your whole 100 megawatt power plant in just half an hour and get the result. How many strings have hotspot, or what kind of fault it is generating, cracks, junction box failure. You can just get all the data. Uh, you see in the right bottom the summary of a string inverter failure of a 500 megawatt B plant. So 55% uh, is uh, the sum of open circuit uh, out of the total overall faults. 55% from the open circuit string, extremely low output. So these are the 17 different types of faults can be detected. You see some of these uh, type of fault it can detect like there's any shattered breakage, EVA discoloration, EVA delamination, cell cracker, snail trails like these kinds of faults you can detect. It will help to do a better O&M. DC arc function I already introduced that there's any DC arc system can detect it and disconnect the it from the AC side. So in nutshell, the uh, three major uh, value proposition from Huawei system, one is the higher yield, which uh, with more number of MPPT, the system will provide you more than 2% higher yield. Smart O&M, uh, around 50% higher efficiency in ONM and safe and reliable system. And uh, we have so many, uh, we have 21 specific test center for the inverters, uh, GCTC labs, we call it GCTC labs, where we do tests of all sort of uh, THB tests, high temperature, hall tests, dust proof tests. Uh, any good, any developer, any customer would like to visit, we can take them to these, these GCTC centers to do these tests. Thank you very much. Always available for highest yield. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everybody. I think now we'll just uh, you know open the panel discussion and you know have the you know the other speakers present their views. I think the subject of this uh, you know of this panel is uh, components in an energy system. Uh, so you know, so uh, you know, we have focused a lot of uh, technical concepts and you know, quality, technicality. I think so. Here in this session, we'll make a specific effort to also merge commercial aspects along with you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, along with the technical and quality aspects. I think so. It, as part of an energy system today, any choice is determined not only by the technology but also at the you know price. We all have seen how you know, you know, how the tariffs have been coming down, how the developer returns have been under pressure. So I think so. Uh, you know, I'll ask all of my speakers to also kind of bring in the commercial angle to it. Uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, you know, I'm part of the investment. Uh, I'm part of the renewable energy investment banking team at Yes Securities. Uh, we are a part of Yes Bank. Uh, who uh, you know, Yes Bank is today the leader in funding renewable energy technology in the country. Uh, cumulatively, over the last 10 years, we would have already funded close to seven gigawatts of uh, renewable energy projects, uh, which include more than four gigawatts of solar projects already. Uh, before I, you know, before I go to, go to my other panelists, maybe you know, I'll just first of all ask uh, Akash to kind of give some of his views. Akash, Akash looks at module procurement at Adani, and he'll just give you some of his views on, you know, what all things that he looked at on the module side. And Akash, once again, cover the technical as well as the commercial aspects. You know, how where do you see the market today in terms of the price offerings, competition, etc. Also, in your Correct. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, myself, Akash. I am looking after module procurement in Adani Group. So uh, I, I would like to share my experience uh, because I'm looking after module procurement since almost more than a wave, uh, year time. In past year, uh, we have sourced almost close to one gigawatt module 
outside the from outside india right and uh, i have covered or, or procured all the technologies including thin film mono poly so uh, what are uh, as a buyer what what are the key drivers for us to look while procuring the module so as per the indian scenario and the currently the way the tariffs are going so price is a key driver definitely price is a key driver but addition to that looking uh, looking at the sustainability of the project long longevity of the performance of the module uh, quality becomes a very important driver here and uh, so uh, let's uh, let's just discuss prices of now so this uh, for example right now we we had a introduction for dual cut uh, cell modules right so this is a part of a technology enhancement uh, in the product but certain times what happens i'll i'll share one one of the experience then when uh, uh, you know in one of the manufacturing uh, lot when this uh, manufacturer is increasing their number of buses right so uh, certain point when when they are the lines are not stabilized to accommodate the, uh, this uh, uh, new technology so we have uh, you know shown uh, we have uh, got the results from the lab that uh, there is a certain reduction in low iteration performance of the module so uh, technology enhancement will definitely give you a uh, you know higher watt peaks but it not necessarily not uh, give complete advantage to the supplier uh, sorry buyer so uh, these are these aspects all also needs to be taken care when we see the any any new technology enhancement and uh, now let uh, let me just uh, give my idea regarding the other driver which is a, a key is a quality now uh, we uh, we uh, while uh, uh, you know finalizing any contract we have a very stringent quality process i mean i'm sure entire jinko team will agree with that uh, that uh, uh we have a very stringent quality procedure our aql levels for acceptance on our various criteria are very stringent uh we have a online inspection our uh, you know own in quality team person along with the third party inspection team is also available or uh, during the continuous production production time we have a uh, bomb approval processes and prior to the starting of this production we also uh, conduct a, a production line inspection so for example jinko has a, a 10 lines in a workshop so they will not manufacture um, uh, our product on any of the line we inspect the line we approve the line and we recommend certain changes if needed so that is the quality level uh, because uh, like uh, earlier one of the speaker uh, indicate that we need to focus more on the quality of the module because ultimately that module is going to last for 25 years so that is the key key driver according to me and uh, certainly uh, from jinko we have procured more than 200 megawatt and it was a wonderful experience they have matched with our uh, uh, expectations in terms of quality deliveries so thank you thank you thank you so much uh, thank you so much akash uh, now let me just widen the discussion you know maybe you know uh, first of the cuff let me uh, let me first come to vinay so vinay obviously is part of bridge to india he is he is the definitive uh, you know uh, you know thought leader in the sector be it policy be it you know commercial and 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 i am hoping technology as well uh, so vinay you know so the first question i am going to put to you is you know from a overall energy system first of all do you you know what's your you know when you gaze into the crystal ball how do you see it? do you see a lot of these kind of incremental technology changes happening like a half cut uh, you know module or let's say to move from a central to string inverter etc or you know do you see something radical still in the offering which can completely change the game in the next 2 3 years and given that how does the, you know how does the developer make their energy system choices today okay uh, danish thank you very much for a very kind introduction uh, just a very quick 10 uh, minute a uh, 10 second uh, brief about bridge to india we are a consulting and research company in case you have not come across us uh, we are predominantly renewables focused so we do a lot of work with all the stakeholders uh, developers contractors technology companies suppliers etc uh, coming back to danish's question i think uh, you know uh, i think the key theme in the indian market has for many years has been 
how price sensitive the Indian market has been and that's mainly because India has taken a very pioneering role in allocating projects through a competitive auction process. Uh, despite, you know, the surprising thing is that the volumes in the industry have grown at about 100% CAGR over the last three years, have continued to go down, competition has been increasing. And I think because of that, the entire market, the entire value chain has been very, very price focused. Uh, and, uh, you know, we hear about different technologies, different uh, higher efficiencies, etc., etc. But by and large, I believe that the Indian market is very commoditized. You know, it's very encouraging that, you know, there are, I'm sure there are top two or three developers, whether it is Adani or Renew or whoever, who are trying new technologies and who are uh, more, uh, 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 you know, more discriminatory when it comes to price versus uh, other quality issues. But by and large, the market is very, very price sensitive. And I think I can give you, a, a, you know, two or three quick examples of that. You know, one, when we see, uh, for example, what are the trends in module uh, sourcing, uh, apart from the top two or three names, you know, names like Jinko and Canadian Solar and Infrina, the, the supply chain in the Indian market is like this. You know, the one year, one supplier takes a dominant position. Next year, the, the, the supply chain landscape and the market share graph changes completely. So I think the market is very commoditized. Uh, I don't see that trend changes, changing dramatically uh, going forward because we know prices are still going down. Uh, it is, I think it is very encouraging that the Indian government is now getting more proactive, more conscious about some of these issues. So we have these policies like quality and testing regime, etc., coming in. Uh, clearly, there is more foreign investment also coming into the sector, and I hope that you know that will foreign investment, growing scale, growing expertise will allow for a better quality differentiation uh, in the sector. Uh, and I think uh, largely, uh, you know, we have this huge debate about domestic manufacturing versus uh, external, you know, imports, uh, because of which, again, there's a lot of disruption and uncertainty uh, in the industry. Uh, and I believe that as India looks to set up its domestic manufacturing industry, you know, there, is, there should be more and more focus on quality, performance, and better design. And hopefully things will improve over a period of time.